Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Today is September the 11th, 2017. It is the 16th anniversary after 9-11, the World Trade Center, that great tragic activity that took place these 16 years ago. Today, the nation will be going through some various activities suggesting that we have recovered, yet we have something that has taken place in this country that was so devastating to this country, and the people today do not know what, really, they do not know what happened. They've expressed some opinions based upon what they've been told. The truth is they do not know. But I'm reminded of this day because it is the day that I was being released from Stillwater Prison in Stillwater, Minnesota. I had been incarcerated at Stillwater, having been violated by the judge of that time for a case that I had committed in an attempt to get the attention of the people of Minnesota to let them know that there is a truer side of life that is open for them. It is the answer to their dreams. I've walked the streets, I've traveled the country trying to get people to accept this message. It's been a very difficult time because I haven't asked for money really to support this cause for the simple reason that it is so wonderful. It is your dream, so why should anyone have to use money? If there's a tool that could be used to further this cause, it seems that if you knew this and you had that ability, you'd do it. it there's no money that can equate with the benefits, the fruits of such a reality. And so, I run for public office from the President of the United States all the way down to the Mayor of several cities to no avail. And the acts of criminality that I committed was to let you know, the American people, that I'm confident of the message that I bring to you. I'm so confident that I'll put my freedom, what you call freedom, on the line. That if you do not come forward, if you ignore me, I'll suffer. But it's worth suffering for. And yet, on this day, 16 years ago, I was being released from that prison, and I was outside waiting, very, very upset, not wanting to come back out here in a community, in a society that had not learned anything. Learn anything about what? <clears throat> about what was going on in the world that you were living in. You couldn't see the evilness that was being perpetrated. The, you don't have to go any further than the election of 2000. Everybody saw what went down and act like nothing had happened that they could do anything about. They just accepted it. At a time when I wrote a letter to the president elect a stolen Mr. Bush indicated that I had tried to get into the race by as a write-in candidate a write-in candidate, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine that? Well, if you were going to write my name in, it would be because you've heard the message of peace, you've heard the message of prosperity, you've heard the message of joy for everyone, and you were so excited about it. The word had gotten all over the nation, and people would be going to the polls, writing in, Eddie Marcus is the next president of the United States of America. But that didn't happen. But I wrote the letter to the president and told him I'd be watching him. And when I see him doing things that didn't make any sense, that was just diabolically uh, contradictory to life, that I would expose it. And this is when I'm confident that uh, his people did a research on me, found out that I was on paper, contacted the judge, see, contacted the judge. See, that's what these judges are in place for. You don't put a judge in place because you want him to follow the law. Yes, you want him to be able to follow the law as much as he can until it is required for him to do what the powers want him to do. 
And when they do that, then they're okay. So this judge called me in, my probation officer and another uh, what they say, a lawyer that they had given me, who had never seen me before, thought the judge must have been going to release me because I had been such a model citizen. Model citizen meaning that I hadn't really done anything to go back to jail for. But instead of that, I was violated and sent to prison. Oh, I knew what that was all about. And the reason that I know that it was true is because of the joy that I felt. I felt more joy than being outside on paper. Now I'm in prison. Why? Because I had taken another effort to protect the people of the United States of America from the abuse that they're getting from the powers that be. Well, I did my time, and I'm thinking about, now here I am getting out, who can I talk to? You, the people who were blind to everything I said thus far? No, I didn't have, <laughs> I had no fantasy that anything like that would be successful. But while I was waiting, to be re for the time to re actually be released, came on the television. A plane just went into the World Trade Center. You looked at it and you saw another plane coming into the World Trade Center. And for me, I'm thinking to myself, had I been elected president of the United States, something like this never could have happened. Never could have happened. It never could have happened if I had been elected like, like president of the United States because you, the people, would have changed. And our ideals, as it is reflected to our other people of other nations, would have been fantastic. No one would have been trying to destroy us unless we were just a stumbling block in their business of becoming world powers and ruling the world in a different way. <coughs> And then since that time, we've discovered through certain information that perhaps this was not a terrorist attack. It was an attack, and if you're going to call it terrorist, it's because people who wanted to exert their initiatives amongst the population had taken a step, but it involved the people within this government. It involved systems within this government and others. It was all worked out to do and two, give the impression as it has. And people saying, well, it was, a, it was an inside job, even though Building 7 just fell down like the other buildings and no plane hit it. Even though the stones and stuff that were used to make the building all disintegrated to dust, people just are people. <laughs> And so here I got to come back out of trying to talk. I didn't want to come back, ladies and gentlemen, but I had to get out of prison. So I came back. And for the, what, I've been out 16 years. It was like I used to go to jail all the time standing up. But I think the American people are getting more dead than ever before. And you can tell how dead they are when you look at what they are allowing to happen. The pain and suffering. The system of economics that would leave some people so destitute that when a, a catastrophe or something occurs that disrupts the normal order of the day and allows them to break in to properties and try to retrieve something for their personal gain and look at it as saying, thank God Almighty, I got a chance to get this. Now, what kind of nation is a nation that, in response to situations like this, build jail? Build jail. Start treating people mean, calling them no good. Do you know for every person that go out there and steal, for every person that is put down because of they found a need to go and loot, and you condemn them, you're condemning yourself three times worse. Because the system is designed that that should never happen. And you, my friend, are following <clears throat> a system that does the opposite of good. Now, let me remind you, for every evil, there's a good. For every good, there's evil. For every right, there's a wrong. Everywhere.
for every person that you got in Congress, there are as many evil ones with no intent for the people as there are for those that have no intent for the people. And those who have no intent for the people have been bought, basically. They've been lobbied. They have been sent to promote the interests of the powers that be. You have heard it said that FEMA was building FEMA camps. And they were going to be used for situations whereby <clears throat> would separate the population and put them in a position where the government got so much control over them. In fact, they said they were going to start killing them. And they got in different states coffins that styled up for millions. So they can have something to bury these people in and stock them on. What were they going to do? It had been said that the economy was going to be so uh, corrupted <coughs> that people would have such hardships buying things. And stores would be empty. People would be fighting in the streets. And this order would have all crossed the country. And then would set up what? Martial law to come in and control people and manipulate people. And their intent basically is to rid the world of as many people as they feel, the powers that be, are not required, are not needed any longer. Say so they take in Walmart stores, turning them into concentrated camp-like things. And yeah, well, when we look at it, we see all kinds of threats still around the world. And our response to it is to force people to not be threatening us. Why? And when I say us, I'm not just talking about America. I'm talking about the people who are all connected in that. Really, the United Nations. We're going to force people. And so how do we force them? We force them by starving them, making their people suffer, making them, hoping that if their people suffer enough, they will get mad with the government and turn around and take, it, take over the government. And then we, who the power that be can install who they want in that position. Well, here we go. Here we go. That same old crap. And when people get pushed against the wall far enough, they are all, some hell has been breaking loose all the time. But when they get pushed against the wall far enough, pure hell will break loose. You can take a little old innocent puppy, a puppy that has been loved with nothing but the best love they can get, but separate them from that love. You can push that little puppy who probably has never barked before till they'll turn around on you and give you all the little hate they can, master, they can muster. So what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't, let me tell you a little simple thing. You, to stand up and say, the United States is the greatest nation on the face of the earth. You have been trained to believe that that's something to be proud of. That that's something fundamentally to believe in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the attitude of bullies. So when you take that attitude, you talk about bullies, then you're doing nothing but being a bully. We the greatest. You should be ashamed to say that. Because to say that you are the greatest, what are you saying? You say more economically together than any other power on the face of the earth? More socially together than any other power on the face of the earth, including religion and all that stuff, than anybody else on the face of the earth, militarily on the face of the earth? And you're looking at people who are less than that means that if they're less than you, they're suffering. And then there's something that's less than that suffering. And you bragging about how bad you are and how big and important you are. You ain't nothing but an expression of the farthest step away from good that you could possibly be. Why do I say that? Because of the pain and suffering, the destruction that follows you. So what's good? Good is meaning those ends, making sure that what you saw that was hurting and it was going to the doctor. Sick. Go there and get treated. Walking out feeling good. Toothache. Yeah, and since I'm talking about a toothache, making sure that everybody in this country who needs dental care, get it. Get it. Don't want nothing to separate you from the love of God. I don't want anything to separate me or you from the love of God. Here's what I see. I've seen a bunch of stuff that I will not accept anymore. I will not accept anything ugly said about God. I will not accept anything ugly that's said about God. Anything that's ugly 
that American people and people of the world feel is an expression of the seeds that they've been planted. It's an expression of the what they've been giving out. It's coming back. It is the truth being manifest right before our loving eyes. And we, my friends, do not know God. We look at everything that we see and we know that man didn't have anything to do with that. So we say there, there is a God. But how does that God affect our lives? Well, we got people everywhere who looked at that God and got that God doing some of everything. Got that God doing some of everything. But now where is that God that is committed to love? Where is that God that is the actual parent of the every human being on the face of the earth? Where is that God? The only way we know about these other gods is because the people are out there doing what those gods say do. Some of those gods are telling people to go kill folk because they don't believe like they believe. And they are out there killing them. Some of those gods are telling people it's okay to lie and cheat and steal to take advantage and be a, consider yourself more than someone else. Those gods, but where is that God that's saying, I made you and every last one of you are entitled to basic survival things and out of that will teach you, my friends, how to benefit out of the cream on the top. Sixteen years out of prison. The only thing that I've done since then it's got one speeding ticket and a parking ticket. Neither one did the city, state, whoever, the government show up and it was thrown out. Because even that was an opportunity for me to state as much as I possibly would be allowed for the records. Not that any of you would believe it. You won't believe it. You can't believe it. You've been so indoctrinated. This is not your fault, ladies and gentlemen, because you, how could you know anything different unless somebody who really knew something different told you something different? You would say that the preachers, the one who said that God has called them and touched them to bring a message to you, and what are they doing? Preaching the Bible. You can read the Bible. You don't need anybody to preach the Bible to you. You need somebody to tell you what that means in application of your daily life. How are you to live in this life as a Christian, as a person who is listening to a higher power? And that's all over. That, that goes beyond Christianity. How are you supposed to live in a world that's like this? And they, my friends, if they're touched by God, will be able to tell you that, but not only in words. They will be walking and leading you down that path. A man of God leads you down that path. He doesn't just talk. Well, God said be good. The Bible says be good. What the devil does that mean, preacher? What the devil does that mean? I'm looking at you now. You're doing the same thing I do. In fact, I'm supporting you. Come on. Now, where can you go with that? Remember. There is good and there is evil. They are just as equal as they can be. But each is empowered by your choice. You have choice. This is what choice means. Good or evil. It is your choice. And how do you know whether it's good or evil? By what it produces. And when you are gearing yourself up to step forward, what do you do to prepare yourself as you go out with the attitude of doing unto others as you have others to do unto you? Based upon that, your conscience will dictate if you were in line with a higher truth or not. Not only that, the comeback will be the evidence. And when you set up and follow something, and this is what I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, then I'm going to let this end. Remember this. The world is like this. Let's say you got a married couple. A married couple. You have said that you guys are fantastic together and you're going to be together. You are all that each other need for things like what people are married for. And you will survive any problems, whether it has to do with poverty, whether it has to do with health. You just that committed. And then you walk out there 
And I'm going to tell you, basically, like we understand it to be. There, it comes around an occasion where the woman, the, the prettiest thing that God ever made, really, to a man especially, <laughs> and some other man sees her. And, and this man is just not any man, but he's a man who is a friend, supposedly a friend of her husband. A man who can sit and talk with the husband as though this husband can depend on him for any and everything, while at the same time he's winking at this man's wife. You see what's happening there? But let's not stop there. His wink becomes something that she detests and to keep any kind of confusion beyond that which has already been created. She doesn't mention this to her husband. And she carries herself in such a way that this friend knows that he's wasted his time and he's sort of embarrassed. Maybe. He might not be, but he might be. And this thing passes on. Or it could be but by this winking got this attention of the lady. And so rather than withdraw she's drawn and now you got something else going on this represents our society when we talk about goodness and go and, and evilness when and the challenge is there the challenge will always be there the choice is always there the challenge will always be there there are certain things that produces peace prosperity and joy and there are certain things that produces the opposite, certain activities that produces the opposite. And where you are in your spiritual development, where you are in your new birth, if you got any new birth at all, will be reflected in your actions. Now, right now, the winds, the storms, of life, which is literally talking about rain and floods and tearing down of cities, not just the neighborhood, but states. I think they've started getting the states now. And the wildfires are just burning all over the place. And somebody said, well, that's coming from God. Well, I would say to you, if it's coming from God, it's only to the extent that it is the fruit of the seed that humankind have planted. When I think about all of the people on the earth who know nothing about God, who know nothing about the truth of God, but are being deceived by that other side that ain't thinking about God. And then I look back at these FEMA camps they had said it was to be something like the Jews, the Germ Jews had to go through in Germany during the period of the Holocaust. But right now you look at it and all this devastation that's coming across this nation, they are housed for what? Shelter. You say, well, you got people there, so if you decide to run some gas through the building, you just kill them all. But at the same time, you could think at least the good side of it is, is it's there to house people while you get a chance to reestablish the order without. But that's speaking of goodness. And how can you say that about goodness being possibly the new way when you came there the backward way? When you think about when you look out there no houses to go to, when you look out there and no jobs to go to, no buildings, no real streets that would take you too far, any car that you might have to walk or ride a bicycle. You start thinking about those kinds of things. You start might start thinking, well, if I work with someone else, we can achieve a little bit more than this. And if you start saying that, you will find out that you can do this without any money. All you got to do is for the benefit that's going to come out of it. You're doing it for the benefit, for the result that's going to come out of it. Why? Because there's a need there. Because there's resources. There's 
everything that is required to meet these needs. So you're not talking about money. Money is not needed to meet a need. It just causes you problems because you might not be able to agree on the wages. Hey, if you go because you need it, you can, and you do it, nobody's complaining about anything. Why? Because both are satisfied. Now, I'm just trying to tell you a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, about 2016. Six, 2017. 16 years since what we call that n disaster that has got us in a position of being threatened by a power in North Korea that if the United States caused any more harm to them through sanctions, they had something for them. That's like that puppy being driven in that wall, to the wall, to the last point, can't take it no more. Sometimes you can push the person or anything so far till they don't give a heck. You see, when a person is born again in the spirit of goodness, they don't give a heck about your system anymore. They are stand up against your system. The difference in them standing up against your system is that they are doing it even though they're letting you know that if you kill them, it wouldn't make them change. And they sat there and stand the test of time and you kill them. They will not kill you because they know that is an expression of evil. So, when that little puppy took all that stuff off you, he was expressing, or that puppy was expressing good. But he got to the point where he was absent any more wisdom about good. And the only solution was a counterpunch. <laughs> So you push a nation, a nation that wants to be free, a nation where, yes, the, owner, the, the leading person might want to have all the power, but as that nation becomes free, I mean free, then that freedom will be exploding throughout the population, even if it's just something that they endure without the government acquiescing. It happens because that's what freedom does. And when freedom is felt, freedom knows the difference between bondage. And so when that freedom is not coming, and everybody throw their hands up, it could be like the Davidians, David Koresh the Davidians. They just throw their hands up and get burned up. Or they could be like Jim Jones. They just drink the poison. Head up. They won't kill you. They're not going to do anything to you but to hell with you. And they just want a way out. But to me, the most wonderful way to go out, to me, is to represent something wonderful like peace for the whole world. Something great like prosperity for the whole world. Something divine like joy for the whole world. And they kill you. <laughs> because they don't want it. And after they kill you, the people settle back down, business as usual, on their path to hell. Now, there's nothing to laugh about. The only thing that makes it kind of funny is that the people think that they're right. They don't really mean any harm, but they just need the floods to come. They just need the wind to blow. They need the fires to burn until they have nothing left. Nothing left but hope. And perhaps that hope will draw them together and see the benefit of all that remains coming together to achieve just a little bit of that so much they could have had if they had seen it earlier. So this is my message to you, to all who hear on the 16th anniversary of that day.
when the World Trade Center became a burning bush. Bye-bye.